विश्व प्रसिद्ध हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल विश्व प्रसिद्ध हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल विश्व प्रसिद्ध
let me know now it's fine yes or no yes or no is it fine now okay thank you one minute Yes. Hello, students. Sorry for the delay. This is a small technical error. Okay. Now it's clearly audible, right? Yes. No disturbance. Clearly audible. Yes. Okay. So, hello. All of you, welcome to Anna Academy Neat English Channel. I am Miss Gopika, your biology educator, right? Yes, so we can stop all the spam about the music. Students sometimes happens, right? What even machines make mistakes, even we humans make mistakes. So relax, okay? So you got all of you got some time to chit chat with each other, okay? So now let's start the class. So students. Those who do not know me, my name is Gopika and I am your biology educator and you can see me on An Academy Neat English channel. If you still haven't subscribed to this channel, this is high time students, you have to subscribe, right? Okay, let's start the class. Before I start the class, I have something to tell you. All of you have been asking me, ma'am, where is the telegram link? Ma'am, what is happening, right? So students, this is the telegram link, okay? You can just go to telegram and type An Academy Neat English channel. There is around... 10,000 plus students, so do not get confused, do not wrong, join the wrong telegram channel, okay? And I saw a lot of questions, I saw a lot of questions about, ma'am, can we complete, uh, can we crack need by just following YouTube channel? Ma'am, can we, uh, you know, uh, study well or score well about 650 plus if you study only from YouTube? Students, my personal opinion on this, because many students have been asking me personally as well as in the special class and also I saw some YouTube comments. Students, let me tell you, see when you're studying from YouTube, yes, you can crack it. I'm not telling you cannot crack it, but you have to be 100, 101% one, consistent. There shouldn't be any distractions and which is not possible humanly, right? So that is why it is always best to join a batch or to join a course where they will be, you know, taking care of you. It is like, why do you go to school and colleges? Everything is available online, right? Why do you go? So that you have a proper system, right? So students, those who are asking this question, ma'am, can I crack NEAT by just watching YouTube video? My answer is you can crack only if you're very, very consistent with no distraction. You have a proper plan to crack NEAT because just imagine there are lakhs of students, right? There's around uh, 24 lakh students who will appear. Out of that, if you want to crack, out of that, if you want to crack NEAT, that means you have to the best of the best. So students, now I know that all of you will be thinking, ma'am, it's not affordable. Do not worry, we have launched our Avengers 3.0, right? And it is very, very, very affordable. How many of you have already joined? How many of you already enrolled for it? Because the first 500 students are going to get the offer. The rest of them, you will have to 
you will not be getting any offers. So look here, those who are not aware of it, how many of you already enrolled for Avenger 3.0? Tell me. Students, for those who don't know what is this, this is Avengers 3.0 where you will be getting six months training. That is from say October till your exam. That is up to your May, we will be getting coaching, right? We will be getting coaching, okay? And you will also get mock tests. You will also get, you will, top educators will teach you, right? So this course is just available for 3999, okay? And if you use my code, you're going to get discount and my code is Gopika. Okay, my code is Gopika, G-O-P-I-K-A. Is it difficult to remember? Use this code and join right now because first 500 students are only going to get the offer. Fine? Yes? So, if you don't know how to join, what to join, the link is in the description box. Just click on the link directly. You will be going there. You can enroll now. Students, just by watching YouTube video, it is very, very difficult to crack neat when so many lakhs of students are writing. Yes? Okay. Yes, you can join. Venki, the only thing that you have to do is, I will put the link in the description box. Just go click that and enroll right now. Okay? Enroll right now because it is going to get over. Okay? Right? See, even if the 75% is recorded, 25% is this, students, whenever there is a mock test happening, uh, teachers are going to guide you. Okay? Teachers are going to tell you what went wrong, what could have been done better. Right? We are going to take classes for that okay yes so shall we start our class students who haven't enrolled this is the right time because only first 500 students are going to get this offer yes <clears throat> no we haven't started Venki the batch is going to start so you, this is the right time for you to join okay the batch hasn't started we just oh, we just started Avengers 3.0 so this is the right time okay, so that you don't miss out on lot Okay, students, so let's start photosynthesis in higher plants. Now, many of you throughout, from the time I joined, all of you have been like, ma'am, teach plant physiology, ma'am. Whenever I'm teaching any chapter, your only concern is plant physiology, right? Finally, we are starting plant physiology. And the topic that we are going to do is photosynthesis, right? Now, all of you know what is photosynthesis because you have been studying, I don't know, from your second standard. You have been studying photosynthesis. Now, what are we going to study as, you know, higher class students, right? What are we going to study as higher class students? Photosynthesis, we are going to study what is the food that this plant is making. We all have been learning that plant makes their own food, right? Plant makes their own food. This is what we have been studying. Now, what do they make? Do they make uh, rice, roti? What do they make? How do they make? All this is the concern. The basic thing, the basic thing is it is carbon-carbon bond, right? Bond formation. That means you're, you're forming your glucose or the plant is forming glucose as the food material. This is what photosynthesis, right? You have been studying that it makes its own food. Now, what is the food? Food is glucose. Now, how is all of this happening? With the help of carbon-carbon bonds, correct? All of you agree, right? And photosynthesis is mainly, you have two modes of, what is it, food production, right? Two modes of food production. One, one is autotrophic, autotrophic, and one is heterotrophic. All of you are following me? Heterotrophic and autotrophic. Autotrophic means I told you about auto mode, like how you set auto mode in your phone. That means the phone will do everything. You just have to stand and click the photo, right? Same thing. Autotrophic means they will do everything on their own. That is, they'll prepare their food on their own. Heterotrophic means they will depend on other organism for food, right? Depend on other organism. Depend on other organism for food, right? Now, this is the mode. This is the mode of nutrition. That means it can be autotrophic or heterotrophic. Now, we know plants are autotrophic and it is capable of doing photosynthesis. Now, photosynthesis requires, requires so many raw materials, right? Photosynthesis requires so many raw materials. What are the raw materials it requires? It requires water. It requires chlorophyll. Right? It requires, what else students, sunlight and it requires carbon dioxide. 
it requires carbon dioxide oh you cannot see one minute i'll write it down right so what are the raw materials it requires it needs carbon dioxide water right chlorophyll and sunlight these are the basic necessities for photosynthesis to happen you have all studied this from your i think second standard i don't have to repeat now what you need to understand is that photosynthesis means the main thing the main thing is production or formation of your carbon carbon bonds and formation of your glucose c6 h12 o6 correct now for formation of this for formation of our glucose we need some raw materials now you need to prove right your textbook or your ncrt starts with an introduction trying to make you understand how how did we come to a conclusion that these are the raw materials why can't some other thing be the raw material right so to prove this they did few experiments right they did few experiments so you are going to understand those experiments clear clear so are you clear with the introduction it's just basically we are introducing the chapter to see what and all is there okay students are you all there with me i cannot see any response what is happening are you all there tell me <coughs> quickly yes ma'am okay where is the likes yeah like the session i told you don't be don't do kanjusi right like the session right don't do kanjusi in that yes trisha good job students did you share the link with your friends where's your friends did you bring in your friends <laughs> okay so students this is the i told you this we are going through the ncrt lines right i told you i am not taking anything out so we are going through our ncrt let's see what your ncrt is saying they are saying that all animals including human beings depend on plants for their food we know this right they are autotrophic now green plants in fact have to make or rather synthesize their food they need and all other uh, organism depend on them that means plants will do autotrophic behavior and animals are going to do heterotrophic behavior by feeding on them right by feeding on them now the green plants uh, make or rather synthesize the food they need through photosynthesis and that process is called autotrophs right now you have already learned that autotrophic nutrition is found only in plants and all other organism depend on green plants did you learn this before okay did you learn this before yeah so what is happening we can call photosynthesis can i call photosynthesis as a physiochemical reaction how many of you agree to me can i call it a physiochemical reaction because we are synthesizing right we are synthesizing we are also it is going through redox reaction that means something is getting reduced something is getting oxidized do you agree students is is it a physiochemical reaction so we can call for phot photosynthesis as a physiochemical reaction and ultimately all the living forms on earth depend on sunlight depend on sunlight for energy and they use the energy from the sunlight by plants doing photosynthesis so here what are they talking they are talking about the raw materials they are introducing you to the raw materials clear okay they are trying to say that what are the things that are required for a plant to synthesize its own food for us to feed on a plant correct right so here they have asked you a, asked you a question have you ever thought what would happen if there were no oxygen to breathe simple answer you will die that's all don't have to think so much students it's just a one second answer right now this chapter focuses on the structure of photosynthetic machinery that means whatever this photosynthesis is doing we are going to see who is doing what is happening clear yes clear can we proceed okay now let me tell you some general experiments right general experiments now how am i going to prove how am i going to prove if carbon dioxide is needed okay for carbon dioxide presence like to check if carbon dioxide is there i am going to take koh what is this this is potassium hydroxide it's potassium hydroxide okay 
this potassium hydroxide I am going to take. What am I going to do? I have to check if the plant needs potassium hydroxide. Correct? All of you agree? So, I am going to take now. Students, at the end of this chapter, I am going to ask you people question. Okay? So, those who are laughing and having fun in the chat box, when rapid fire comes, you will all get zero. Okay? Now, this is the plant. Okay, this is the plant. The pot is very big than the plant. Right? This is the plant. Now, what am I going to check? I am going to check if this plant needs carbon dioxide or not. If it needs carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. What am I going to take? I am going to take KOH which can absorb carbon dioxide, which can absorb carbon dioxide, right? Or remove the carbon dioxide. Before that, the plant that I have taken, the plant that I have taken should be destarched. Students, someone tell me what's the meaning of destarched plant? How do I destarch a plant? Anyone knows? Okay, suggestion taken. Yes. Okay, students, someone tell me what is destarched? How do I destarch this plant? What is the meaning of destarch? What are the terms involved in it? Quickly tell me. <clears throat> so, destarch means removing the starch, right? Now, plants, yes, absent. So, what is going to happen? The plant would have already made starch. When sunlight was there, when everything was there, it would have already made starch. Now, I have to make sure that this plant is kept in dark for few days, okay, two to three days, okay. It's kept in dark for two to three days so that the starch gets completely removed. Starch gets completely used up by the plant. Used up by the plant. Now, why am I doing this? I am doing this so that when I do this experiment, I can make sure that the result I have got is completely appropriate. Now, what is going to happen? Imagine you did the same experiment. You did not use a destarch plant. You just kept a normal plant. What is going to happen? The place where I made, where I applied KOH, no? There also when I do the iodine test, some bluish black color is going to be seen. Because why? The leaf has already made starch. That starch would have slowly started moving, right? To remove starch. Very good. So, I have taken a discharge plant. Now, what am I going to do? I can dip this leaf, okay? I'm going to dip this leaf in KOH. Students, this experiment also, I'm sure you would have studied it, okay? I'm going to dip this leaf in KOH. I'm going to dip it in KOH. Assume this is KOH. Now, what is going to happen? After a few minutes, you keep it for some time, okay? You keep it for a day or you keep it for some time. Now, I am going to remove this leaf out, okay? I am going to cut this leaf out. What is going to happen? What is going to happen? When I do iodine test, when I do iodine test, I am going to see that the region where I did not use KOH turned bluish black. Turned bluish black. And this region did not turn bluish black, okay? So, this turned blue black in color because it formed starch and it reacted with iodine what happened to the area where K i put a koh carbon dioxide was in there so if carbon dioxide is not there that means photosynthesis will not take place are you clear on this experiment students clear yes or no let me know quickly hit the like button and let me know if the experiment is clear very easy experiment, no? We use KOH which will absorb all the carbon dioxide. We dip the leaf into KOH and we did an iodine test. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, students, do not underestimate these experiments. What is going to happen? Lot of questions will be asked from this experiment. Okay. Lot of questions will be asked from this experiment. Yes, okay. So, <clears throat> this is the first experiment. So, according to what I uh, told, right, what is the raw material? We have proved carbon dioxide is the raw material. Now, see, this is the experiment. This is the same thing what we did. We dipped the leaf in KOH and we tried to test it. Okay. Now, the now what we have to find out, we have to find out. So, now we proved K, uh, COH. We proved CO2 is there. Okay. Next. Next thing is to prove 
if chlorophyll is needed or not. If chlorophyll or say sunlight is needed or not. Let's start with sunlight because it will be easy for you people to understand. It's similar experiment. That's why. So students, I took a leaf. Okay, very easy. Let's do it fast. I took a leaf and I covered it with some fossil. Okay, I covered it with a, a sorry, foil. Okay, I covered it with a foil and I left it for photosynthesis to happen. So this will be on a plant, right? And I left it for sunlight, like I left it for photosynthesis to happen and I waited for some time, okay? The sun is there, sun is there, sunlight is going to be absorbed. Now what did I do? Again, with this leaf, I did iodine test. Now what is observed? I saw that the area where I put the foil except that area all the other areas turn to be blue in color turn to be blue in color so what does this prove this proves that without sunlight photosynthesis will not take place right without sunlight photosynthesis will not take place okay clear on sunlight i'm sure all of this you people have studied that's why i'm going quick i'm going faster fine okay this is understood <clears throat> now next topic is what water now, I, do I have to tell water is required or not? Water is required. Now, water is required or water is the one that is giving the oxygen. All that will be proved later in the chapter. Okay, but water is necessary. Same way, chlorophyll also is necessary. Now, how will I check if chlorophyll is necessary? I will take a leaf that has... Okay, I have taken a leaf. Another leaf. Shall we erase this? Okay, I have taken another leaf which is students this is the leaf okay it has some green patches and it has some yellow patches how many of you have seen leaves like this how many of you have seen leaves like this tell me quickly have you seen green uh, leaves like this where there are some green patches and some yellow patches yes yes how many of you have seen this leaf yes ma'am okay so students, such a leaf is there. What is going to happen? The area which was green in color, the area which had chlorophyll, right? The area which had chlorophyll will show photosynthesis and turn blue-black in the presence of starch. In the presence of iodine, it will form, it will show that starch was formed, okay? Easy experiment to prove chlorophyll is there. The areas which were green in color, will turn blue-black on adding iodine. This shows that the area which was green made starch. Okay, made starch. Clear? Can I go move on? Because we are getting into difficult experiments. Now, this is just the, this is just the basic. Okay, I am telling you the basic of photosynthesis. Why did we tell that only this raw materials are needed? Now, we are going to get into the actual chapter. Okay? Now, all this was the history. Now, we are getting into the actual part. Okay? So, let's start. So, this was the first, okay, KOH experiment I have already told you. That is the first topic in your, uh, student, wait, and not ready. Okay, so, this experiment, why is it, students, one minute. Yes. Can all of you see? Yes. Okay. So, in this experiment, Joseph Priestley was the one who tried to find out something. Now, let's see. I want all of you to just look at the image, not look at the writings. Okay. Writings is just for your notes purpose. I'm only going to explain you with the image. Now, look at this image. We have a mouse. Okay. We have a mouse and we have taken or Joseph Priestley has taken a candle. Now, what has happened? He kept both of them. He closed it in a bell jar. He used this. This is the bell jar. Okay. Bell jar. Now, what happened? After some time, he noticed that the candle also got extinguished. Okay. The candle also got extinguished and the mouse also died. The mouse also died. Now, he was thinking what would have happened. That is when he thought. That is when he thought. Now, all of you tell me what is something that the mouse would have you know, exhaled out. What is one thing that the mouse would have exhaled out? Tell me, what he, what mouse would have exhaled out that made the candle to get extinguished? 
first person's name I'm going to call out. Whose answer is fast? Very good, Sanvi. Okay, so mouse, mouse exhaled out carbon dioxide and you know carbon dioxide is used in fire extinguishers. So what is going to happen? This flame got uh, extinguished, right? Now, to prove this experiment, so first understood, understood what is the basic setup. He took a mouse, he took a candle, he let them both be inside a bell jar and then after some time he noticed that the candle also got uh, extinguished, mouse also died. It was understood that the mouse released carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide will extinguish the candle, right? <laughs> extinguish the candle. Now, for this to make a difference, okay, to check what, what would have happened, he placed a mint plant. Which plant did he place? Mint. Mint, students, your uh, pudina. Right, your pudina. So, he placed a mint plant or a pudina. He placed it inside it and for his shock, he noticed that the candle also didn't get extinguished. The mouse also was alive after some time. So, what did he try to prove from this? He tried to prove that plant purifies, okay? In your NCRT, the word is restores, okay? He tried to prove that the plant purifies the air by adding oxygen to it. Now, understood, here what happened? The air was completely, you know, the completely contaminated or the air was not good enough for each other to breathe, right? So, what happened? This mouse died. Now, here what happened? The air got purified. The air got purified by the mint plant. Yes, how did it purify? By giving out oxygen. So, the mint kept giving out oxygen. It purified both of this. Clear students? Joseph Priestley's experiment is clear. Now, what is your MCQ question could come? Priestley, you may recall, has discovered oxygen in 1774. Again, an MCQ question could be asked. Okay, who discovered oxygen or at which year was oxygen discovered? So, your answer should be Joseph Priestley in 1774. Clear? Can we go to the next experiment? All of you, tell me quickly. Yes? Okay. Now, this is according to your NCRT. What did he conclude? Plants restore air, breathing, uh, air, whatever breathing animals and the burning candle removes. That means whatever is coming out from the candle or the breathing animal, the plant will restore or we could use another word, purify. Purify. Yes, are we done? First experiment is clear. Very, very important students do not ignore even one experiment because questions will be asked from it. They can give some scientist name when you have to remember so many things. This is an easy catch for the teachers to you know, be like, oh, let's give this question. Okay, so let's go to the next experiment. Okay, next experiment was similar setup, was a very similar setup. Okay, what happened after Joseph Priestley? Okay, after Joseph Priestley, another scientist came, okay, Jan Ingenhaus. He came and he did a similar setup, but what he did differently was uh, uh, Joseph Priestley took Pudina, right? This uh, Jan took, okay, Jan took your aquatic plant, hydrilla, okay? He took an aquatic plant or a hydrilla and what he tried to find out? He tried to find, he saw that whenever this plant, you know, whenever this plant is in proper sunlight, in bright sunlight, whenever photosynthesis may be happening, they release some small bubbles. They release small bubbles. This is one of your experiments in BSc. I am not sure if you have it in PU, but in your BSc, this one experiment is there, okay? So, where you will be doing like this, you will keep a hydrilla plant and check if bubble formation is going to happen and you will see bubble formation, okay? Because photosynthesis is happening, then definitely bubble formation will happen. So, what did he do? Let's see, what did he do? He uh, showed that sunlight is essential for plants. Students, very, very important. Which scientist did what? Okay, Joseph Priestley, what did he prove? Joseph Priestley, what did he prove? He proved that plant can restore damaged air or plant can restore... Uh, you know, contaminated air by releasing oxygen into it. Now, this person has tried to prove that sunlight is essential for the process of plant and what somehow purify the air fouled by burning candle or breathing animals. This is the continuation. Got it? This is the continuation. But what did he do? He made a better setup. He made a better setup by using 
an aquatic plant and please make a note the aquatic plant was hydrilla they can ask you even if it is not mentioned here the aquatic plant was hydrilla and he kept it in bright sunlight he and he saw small bubbles he saw small bubbles were formed around the green parts while in the dark they did not while in the dark they did not that means what that means you this green parts may, did photosynthesis and photosynthesis gave rise or released oxygen and that oxygen was seen in the form of bubbles clear yes all of you so he identified these bubbles to be oxygen this was his finding this was his finding so did he did not find oxygen he saw that whenever there is bright sunlight the green parts of the plant will release small bubbles called oxygen okay do not get it confused okay don't write oh jan found oxygen no prisley already discovered oxygen clear now hence he showed that it is the only green part of the plant that could release oxygen very important finding very important finding that green part of the plant can only release oxygen got it yes second experiment is clear what did he do he basically did the same setup he try he also came to a like he showed that sunlight is essential air will purify or then plant can purify the air but then here what did he do he took an aquatic plant he kept it under bright sunlight he noticed small bubbles and he called that bubbles as oxygen if you all understood quickly like quickly like the session and let me know okay yes now next scientist students this first series is full of scientist and their experiments okay early experiments only if you understand this we can proceed to further okay so we will make sure that to understand okay the, the the motto is not to just finish the class in say 5 minutes 10 minutes the motto is to make sure that the chapter is no more difficult for you people okay yes fine now this uh, julius von sachs okay sachs you are going to remember this person was telling that okay green pigment is there agreed i agree on all of this but this green pigment should be stored somewhere no or should be located somewhere right now he was in a hurry to find this green pigment where is it present or where is it stored okay that is what he was trying to find so evidence for production of glucose when the plants grow so he also came to a finding that there should be something that will be released right there should be something that will be released at the end of photosynthesis and where will that production happen okay where will that production happen now glucose is usually stored as starch students all of you know starch is made up of amylase and amylopectin so the most visible product the most visible product first in a plant is starch okay right visible product is starch now the green substance in plant is called the chlorophyll that means what green substance is your pigment is called chlorophyll okay and it's located in special bodies called as chloroplast now what are we trying to find out we are trying to find right we are trying to find that if chloroplast is, is there a body and is there glucose all this we are trying to find okay all this we are trying to find now the green parts in the plant is where the glucose is made and that is the where the glucose is usually stored right yes amylose and amylopectin very good okay now we have to understand chloroplast okay we will just see a general structure of chloroplast tell me if chloroplast is double layered single layered what is happening chloroplast double layered single layered it is double layer right so we have an outer membrane outer membrane we have an inner membrane okay now now we have some important people in the place okay double layered very good it is double layered yes now look here we are going to draw some coin like structure okay as if stock of coins are arranged we are going to draw some structure
students okay tell me how many of you know what have i drawn what have i drawn what is this coin like structure it's like one coin over the other coin we all used to play you know when we were small we used to keep one coin above the other okay to make sure that it does not fall now tell me what is this any of you know okay okay one person has told grana all of you agree with grana okay now i have drawn some gr green color dots right i have drawn some green color dots now this is called your stroma okay this is called your stroma okay and stroma now this whole thing okay this whole thing is called thylakoids it's called thylakoids and this one is called a grana granum grana okay singular plural you can use correct this is stroma now this thylakoids have to be connected no can they just stay like this can they be like this no right so this thylakoids will be connected with each other okay with each other with the help of with the help of stromal it, it, it's present in the stroma so we call it stromal lamellae stromal lamellae or you can call it some places you can see stromal thylakoids also okay stromal lamellae or stromal thylakoids you can see it differently frets also you can see some places you can also see frets okay so students stick on to this stromal lamella is what your ncrt says so this is the general structure of your chloroplast how many of you understood how many of you understood anyone who didn't understand tell me i'll explain it again if you didn't understand it's not very difficult students we also have our ribosomal unit right 70s ribosomal unit correct yes all of you understood this is the general structure of your chloroplast now why did i uh, teach you chloroplast because after this we are going to see few experiments that was trying to explain about chloroplast okay so if you don't understand okay if you don't understand this you will not understand anything right this this fluid this matrix is called stroma this matrix is called stroma yes clear yes okay this matrix clear to clear to all of you now let's see yes okay now we'll go to the next experiment right yes okay now we are going to the next experiment students now look here we have engelman okay engelman you can remember it as angelman okay angelman he is doing something to do with angles okay so you can call it angelman now he in uh, he was 1843 to 19 uh, not 9 he was using a prism okay here you are going to study a very very important thing what are you going to study you are going to study prism i'm going to teach you physics i'm going to teach you physics okay you'll study about prism you'll study about action spectrum okay action spectrum absorption spectrum okay all this you're going to study don't worry only the terms are so difficult but this is very easy okay students what did he do he took a uh, prism okay and he was trying to prove what was he trying to prove he was trying to prove to see if photosynthesis is high now generally you tell me students if photosynthesis is high photosynthesis high will oxygen also be high will oxygen production also be high all of you tell me this high or low oxygen will be high or low i'm waiting for your answers oxygen will be high or low if photosynthesis is more oxygen will be high tell me high or low that should be your answer okay high yes oxygen also will be high very good correct now he is trying to prove he is trying to prove if oxygen is high or photosynthesis is high in which wavelength of light it will be high we know a lot of wavelengths of lights is there he wanted to check if which wavelength okay <laughs> which wavelength it will be high got it right so to check this he used a prism okay he used a prism and he tried to prove this now i'll show you what he did okay i'll show you what he did 
Okay. Let's take, let's see what and all materials he used. Okay. The materials he used was, he used cladophora. Basically a filamentous uh, Okay, a filamentous algae. He used a cladophora. He used aerobic bacteria. He used aerobic bacteria. Students, instead of cladophora, we can also use pyrogyra. Okay, we can also use pyrogyra. Now, what did he do? He basically took this both together. That is your, uh, I'll draw your aerobic bacteria in different color. He took aerobic bacteria, he took cladophora. Now what is cladophora going to do? It is green in color. It will do photosynthesis, right? So I'll draw a filamentous structure. Now this is going to do maximum photosynthesis. And aerobic bacteria will get attracted to where? Where will it run to? Which area will it run to? Tell me, aerobic bacteria will run to an area which has more oxygen or less oxygen? Where will aerobic bacteria run? Tell me. Yes, more. Very good. Oxygen, wherever is more. Now, if photosynthesis is more, that means oxygen also is more. So, aerobic bacteria will go near to cladophora, wherever photosynthesis is happening. Now, what is he trying to prove? Now, what he tried to prove is, now imagine he took a prism, okay, and he passed, he passed white light. Students, all of you know, white light is a constituent of seven lights, constituent of your Vibgyor, correct? Now, they form this polychromatic. Now, we are going to separate and form monochromatic, right? Now, when this light got passed, he got seven rays, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? Students, he got Vibgyor, he got Vibgyor, right? He got Vibgyor. Now, now what did he do? What did he do? He left Cladophora. He put Cladophora also everywhere, wherever the light was formed. And he also put aerobic bacteria. He also put aerobic bacteria. Okay? I'm just drawing the bacteria like this. Now, tell me. He wanted to find in which of the wavelengths the bacteria is going to multiply. That means where is high oxygen evolution? Where is high photosynthesis? And to his surprise, to his surprise, he found out, he found out that the blue region, okay, and the red region, this aerobic bacteria was multiplying. They were like making friends. They were all calling colonies. They were calling friends, everyone from here and there. And they were multiplying. That means what students? In the blue and the red wavelength, in the blue and the red region, photosynthesis was, tell me, photosynthesis was high or low? Photosynthesis was high or low? In blue and the red region, photosynthesis was high or low? Yeah, red and blue, correct. Tell me. More, very good. Photosynthesis was more. That is why aerobic bacteria also started multiplying maximum. Did you understand this experiment? Did you understand this experiment? Yes or no? Yes or no? So, students, in the blue spectrum, no, in the blue spectrum, more absorption will happen. In the red spectrum, more photosynthesis will happen. One side is more absorption, one side it is more action, right? So, where multiplication is going to happen, photosynthesis, everything will happen in the more on the red. But then blue spectrum, more absorption will happen. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, let's see what did he try to say. One minute. Yes. So, look here. He took cladophora and he placed it in a suspension of aerobic bacteria. The bacteria were used to detect the sites of wherever oxygen was present. Okay. He observed that the bacteria accumulated mainly on the regions of blue and red light. Now, he tried to find out with the help of prism and the white light which area, which area was having extra multiplication. Okay. Extra multiplication. Got it? Okay. Now, students, blue light and red light, it is depending on the wavelength, wavelength, okay? 
so what happens if the wavelength is comfortable now you might be thinking ma'am why not green we have been talking about green so understand that plants actually emit green it does not absorb it emits green we see green right that is because the plants are showing us that it is green it is emitting green but more it's absorbing in the blue light clear okay now blue and red now let's see the empirical formula now we are going into what the formula stands uh, has to say the empirical equation representing the total process of photosynthesis for oxygen evolving organism was then understood that means they try to prove that don't get confused with your english okay they this they're just trying to say that whenever photosynthesis is high they understood that oxygen also will be high so can i tell can i tell rate of photosynthesis is directly proportional to oxygen is directly proportional to the oxygen yes yes whenever photosynthesis rate of photosynthesis will be directly proportional to the oxygen released agreed that is what they are trying to say but your um, english is framed in such a beautiful way that you wouldn't you will not understand the statement fast okay students this is the empirical formula that means just the uh, like how you study in your chemistry you know empirical formula like that so co2 plus h2o in the presence of light and in the presence of chlorophyll in the presence of chlorophyll will give rise to your food that is your glucose and oxygen so can we write the actual formula can we write the actual formula tell me tell me the actual formula co2 plus h2o can you all see yes co2 plus h2o in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll will give glucose c6 h12 o6 plus what is getting oxygen plus i can also write energy right i can also write energy now how do i balance now clear now i told you first one thing i told you in the starting of this class i told you physiochemical i also use the word redox reaction right i also use the word redox reaction yes or no yes or no right now who is getting oxidized who is getting reduced so students i'll draw it on the top because your place is not there or maybe we'll write it again okay so let's write it again okay now tell me the formula co2 plus h2o in the presence of light and chlorophyll will give me glucose and oxygen and i'm going to balance students your chemistry students you should balance okay you should balance if you balance is when your reaction is going to be stable right right <clears throat> all of you start to sit in balance all of you sit in balance okay students so what is happening your h2o right your h2o here is getting oxy okay it's getting oxidized oxidized it's getting oxidized and who is getting reduced here who is getting reduced here your carbon dioxide is getting reduced here to form your glucose so can i call this a redox reaction can i call this a redox reaction yes or no yes or no can i call it redox reaction yes ma'am so you can see that yeah you can see that oxidation also is happening reduction also is happening so i can call this a redox reaction i can call this a redox reaction okay this is what i told you in the starting that this is a physiochemical reaction the chemistry is there so many things are there right redox reaction clear clear okay quickly let's get into the next experiment okay yes so van neel okay van neel came up with an finding now students what i want you people to do is after this class or if you're right now itself writing the notes i want you people to make a separate column for your scientist okay because you are you are you have studied around four to five scientists so i don't want any of you to get confused okay so make a separate page 
write the scientists what they discovered, how did they discover, fine, okay, will you all do that, will you all do that, it's your work for today, okay, it's your work for today, right, yes. So, this Van Neen, who was trying to study, he tried to find, take purple and green bacteria and he demonstrated that photosynthesis is essential, a light dependent reaction, he was trying to say, students, Van Neel did not prove, Van Neel did not prove, okay, Rubin and Carmen came to prove that, you know, the oxygen that we are getting, the oxygen that we are getting is from the water and not from the carbon dioxide. This, so you are have, you have to write Van Neel inferred, okay, Van Neel inferred or you can write Van Neel suggested, okay, suggested about the experiment, but Rubin and Carmen came to a conclusion about the experiment. Okay, let's see what the experiment is trying to say us. That is, when H2S instead, so this is complicated, this is your NCRT line, I'll explain it to you very simple. So, they took H2S, okay, and this, when they, when dissociation happened, what did we get? We got, okay, we got hydrogen molecule and we got a sulfate molecule, right? We got a hydrogen and we got a sulfate molecule. Same thing, same thing, same thing they did with water, right? When they split water, what had happened? They took H2O, okay, and they split, they got H and O2, right? They got H and O2, correct? Now, what were they trying to find? What were they trying to find? They took, basically, he suggested that maybe the oxygen that is coming to us, right? The oxygen that is coming to us may be not from the carbon dioxide. It may be from the water. But how do you prove it? How do you prove it? That is when Rubin and Kam, it, it is not there in your NCRT. But then this experiment is important for you. So what did they do? They actually did radio isotopes. Okay, they used radio isotopes. Now, students, very simple. I will not get into the depth. I'll just tell you what the experiment is. Looking at the experiment, you will only understand what it was trying to prove. Okay. So, they took carbon dioxide, right? They took water. <coughs> they got glucose. And they got oxygen. Okay. Now, what were they trying to prove is that they took radioactive isotopes of here. They took here, this, this oxygen, they took 16. This they took 18 and when they try to find out the radioactivity, right, when they try to find out, they noticed that the oxygen here, the oxygen here took up, took up 18, the oxygen here was 18, correct? How? How? That is because the oxygen that we are getting is from the water, it is not from the carbon dioxide, all of you got it? All of you understood this. How did they how did they find out? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes? No? <clears throat> so just look at this experiment and tell me. They actually took radioactive isotopes, right? And what did they do? They took here, here in the carbon dioxide, they used 16 carbon, 16 carbon uh, oxygen one. Here they took 18. To try to find out that the oxygen that we are getting, is it from carbon dioxide or is it from water? Is it from water? Now, just looking at this equation, isn't it clear that the oxygen we are getting is from water? That means when water splits, right? When H2O splits, that oxygen is what the oxygen we are getting. Clear? Clear? <clears throat> Scientist name you want to write? Please make a note. Please make a note. Who proved this was Rubin. These two people were the ones who proved this. Please write it down in the side of your NCRT. Write it down. Yes. Okay. Okay. Clear? Clear? Yes. Now, here we have some things that NCRT has told in the end. Okay. Now, we have understood the experiments. We have understood the experiments. Okay. Now, Photosynthesis does not take place in green leaves of the plant, but it does so also in green parts of the plant. Stem, that means what are they trying to say? What is your NCRT trying to say? That not only in the leaf, it also takes part in the places wherever there is green. That means your stem, okay, stem, right? Now, mesophyll cells in the leaves have a large number of chloroplasts. 
Now, when we normally talk about your plant, right? When we talk about, say, the plant, okay? You will have, say, your vascular bundle here. Vascular bundle. And if I have to draw your mesophyll cells, I'll draw your mesophyll cells here. Agreed, all of you? Yes? All of you know this basic structure? Now, in the mesophyll cells, in the mesophyll cells, where is chloroplast present? Why are they present in such a way is what the NCRT is trying to ask you. So, understand that in your, if I draw it here, yeah. So, this is your mesophyll cells, Is this is your mesophyll cells, okay. Your chloroplast is going to be present like this, in the walls of the mesophyll, okay. Walls of the mesophyll cells, why? All of you are with me, all of you are with me. I cannot see. I cannot see any response. Yes? Yes? Did you understand this? Mesophyll cells are there, right? Mesophyll cells are there. I have picked up one mesophyll cell here to show you how is chloroplast arranged inside the mesophyll. Now, look here. Chloroplast will be arranged on the walls of the mesophyll, okay? Walls of the mesophyll. So, why? Why? Look at what your NCRT is trying to say. So that they get optimum quantity of incident light. So that they will get good amount of light from all the places. Okay, all the places. Students, what happens? In case everything is clustered to the center, will all of them get? Okay. Will all of them get? If, if imagine, chloroplast is all in the center. Will all of them get proper incident light? Yes or no? Will all of them get proper incident light? No, right? No, right? So, mesophyll cells have arranged the chloroplast in such a way, so all of them get the proper amount of incident light. Now, look here. The chloroplast, therefore, is a membranous structure that has a stroma lamella, grana, and a matrix stroma. We saw this in the structure. Did we see this in the structure? Yes or no? Did we see this? Yes, we saw the structure, right? Now, the membrane system is responsible. So, here, understand the membrane system, the membranes, right? The outer membrane and the inner membrane. What are they responsible for? They are mainly responsible for two things. Okay, we'll write down the two things. First is trapping the light. Trapping the light, okay? And what is the second thing? Look here, for synthesize of ATP and NADPH to synthesize... ATP and NADPH. Got it all of you? Got it all of you? What is happening? Okay, students, I don't want unnecessary spams, okay? Don't want unnecessary spams. Yes. Okay. See, look here, the membranous system, that means what are we talking about? We are talking about the chloroplast, right? We are talking about the chloroplast. So, we already do the chloroplast, so I am not going to draw the whole thing, but just the membrane. See, this is the membranous system, that means there is an outer membrane, there is an inner membrane. Now, this membranous system, okay, membrane system, what are they going to do? They are going to mainly do two jobs, okay? They are mainly going to do two jobs. One is trapping the light. Trapping the light. Okay. Second thing is to synthesize, to synthesize ATP and NADPH. All of you got this? This is from your NCRT. This is from your NCRT. Got it? All of you got this? Yes or no? Yes or no? <clears throat> okay, clear? Trapping light and to synthesize ATP and NADP. ATP and NADP. Now, there is something called as your light reaction and a uh, dark reaction. Now, I want all of you to understand one thing. Students, light reaction means light is directly required for that reaction. Light is directly required for that reaction. Okay? So, light dependent right light dependent means that means they are directly dependent on light okay directly they want sunlight direct 
light independent means does not mean they do not require sunlight that means what they indirectly needs light okay they indirectly need light so whatever is formed in the light dependent phase this light independent phase is going to take use of it got it all of you got it all of you yes or no yes or no do not i have seen so many students telling ma'am light independent phase means they will be in the dark students it is called a dark reaction i agree to it but it means that it is going to require light indirectly indirectly yes yes agreed okay yes correct they are indirectly requiring the light and they take the products of the light dependent they take the products of the light dependent so can we tell they are completely in dark they will do only in dark no okay fine yes you all have a class at 5 right you all have a class at 5 no so let's quickly wrap this up okay we will just summarize whole thing you don't have a class at 5 okay look here this is your chloroplast right this is your chloroplast now we already saw outer membrane inner membrane did we miss anything here the ncrt has missed thylakoids ncrt has missed thylakoids so this is thylakoids you can see here stroma is there ribosomes are there your ribosomes are 70s okay starch granules are there lipid droplets are there okay did we miss anything no right did we miss anything no we already learned this whole thing now what did i sp speak about i spoke about the membrane layer that means the membrane layer will be trapping the sunlight on also synthesizing atp and nadph now your whole light reaction and light independent reaction that is your dark reaction and light reaction will take place in the chloroplast clear it will take place in the chloroplast yes okay now students very <clears throat> See in stroma enzymatic reaction synthesizes sugar which in turn forms starch okay now we are going to see what is happening in the chloroplast okay what is happening in the chloroplast okay so in the stroma what is going to happen we are going to have enzymatic reaction and sugar is going to get converted to starch okay sugar is going to get converted to starch now the former set of reaction since they directly require light it will be called as a light reaction i don't want any students to write dark reaction means light is not at all required for it okay no no mistakes from now on no mistakes clear now here you see the latter where they do not or not directly require light is called your light independent reaction or otherwise they call it the dark reaction are we clear on this students are we clear on this otherwise next class you will not understand what light reaction is are we clear on this so far clear let me know quickly so far are we clear yes or no <clears throat> yes ma'am clear okay okay yes okay students the last topic for today okay last topic because otherwise you will lose the flow so we'll finish this and freshly start with light reaction okay now i want you people to focus here i want you people to focus on the graph this graph is there in your textbook this graph is from your textbook now students what are we trying to understand we are trying to understand the color that the plant shows right the green color that you see in the leaf right it is not because of just chlorophyll it is because of four pigments right it is because of four pigments what are the four pigments chlorophyll a chlorophyll b xanthophylls and carotenoids okay here it's not shown so i will just write it here okay it is mainly because of four pigments chlorophyll a chlorophyll b xanthophylls and carotenoids so the color that you see in a plant is not just because it has chlorophyll it is because it has chlorophyll a b xanthophylls and carotenoids now look here students here what you are trying to see the graph right the graph here is trying to show that at which point right at which wavelength is this photosynthesis at maximum now we already understood see this graph okay this graph shows that rate of photosynthesis 
can be measured with the release of carbon uh, oxygen all of you agree to this or do, do not agree with the graph can we i'll repeat the question can we check the photosynthesis rate of photosynthesis depending on the rate of oxygen released yes or no yes or no agreed yes agreed right so i'm going to explain you this two graphs okay this two graphs this is the graph that we already the topic we have already done so we are just going to see the graph now look here you can see here here is the blue area okay let's write here blue okay and this is the red region red region okay okay students can you see this is the blue this is the red and you can see the photosynthesis is at peak the photosynthesis is at peak that means maximum maximum right and here you see light absorbed and wavelength of light in nanometer here they have tried to uh, understand or combine rate of photosynthesis with absorption here again you can see that the blue and the red area has the maximum absorption and maximum photosynthesis okay now this area which you see the low hill no that is your green here blue is the top okay blue is at peak red is at peak green is the area which is almost low okay because green light is not absorbed by the plant it is emitted by the plants that's why we are able to see green clear all of you clear is there anyone who has a doubt anyone who has a doubt or are we clear are we clear quick i'm waiting for your people's response clear yes ma'am okay so so much is clear so much is clear okay now look here you can see the graph where they are showing chlorophyll a carotenoids and chlorophyll b students understand so much whenever whenever i don't know how many of you know this but listen when chlorophyll or say the whole photosynthesis requires sunlight but sometimes what happens sunlight can be too much sunlight can be too much so when sunlight is too much right when sunlight is too much extreme what happens your chlorophyll a gets damaged okay who gets damaged your chlorophyll a will get damaged that is basically your chloroplast will get damaged automatically chlorophyll a get damaged that is that time what is going to what is going to happen your other pigments are going to help chlorophyll a because chlorophyll a is the pigment that is the most important like the master pigment right master pigment so what is the other pigments going to do other pigments are going to help chlorophyll a to avoid photo oxidation to avoid photo oxidation please make a note please make a note other pigments are going to avoid or protect chlorophyll a from undergoing pho photo oxidation make a note all of you yes okay now look here here they have given uh, your chlorophyll a is bright blue or green color green in the chromatogram okay chlorophyll b is yellow and green xanthophyll is yellow carotenoids are somewhere between your yellow to orange okay now what are they trying to say that means these pigments will be the highest or the maximum when they are at blue or green light okay here it will be during the yellow and greens and here it will be during the yellow and at the last it will be yellow and orange that is your carotenoids will be yellow and orange now how did they test this they used a paper chromatography right they used a paper chromatography and with the help of a paper chromatography how many of you have seen a paper chromatography now what did i do i basically took two three leaves i grinded it very well right okay i grinded it very well i put an extract here okay i put an extract here and i kept it in a <coughs> mobile face students there is mobile and stationary face you don't have to worry about it just understand i placed it in a liquid okay i placed it in a liquid after some time what is going to happen this is going to move right the mobile face is going to move and the mobile face will give rise to say uh, we will start with your chlorophyll a maybe somewhere here we got a small green color then we got a small yellow color okay then we got a slight orange color okay so like this separation has happened 
separation has happened understood all of you understood all of you this liquid will get absorbed by the paper chromatography and this plant extract will have all your pigments they will slowly start moving okay they will slowly start moving and whenever they reach the point how much they can run they will come and form the colors how many of you understood this yes ma'am okay students you will all do paper chromatography if you haven't done you will definitely do it okay yes so this is how they try to understand that your pigments right your chlorophyll a b xanthophyll carotenoids they're doing a lot of help they're doing a lot of help and not only that they are very very active right they're very very active during certain places can you see here look here this whole region can you see okay absorption of light so this is called as absorption spectra whoever can absorb right okay absorption spectra and we have uh, your action spectra remember when, when i taught you the before one okay now look here i have put a better picture for your understanding okay because your ncrt picture wasn't very clear now pigments are substances that have the ability to absorb light at specific wavelength very very important specific wavelength only they will absorb the light they will not absorb light whenever wherever they want they will only absorb it at okay when the when certain wavelength is there only that time they will absorb i told you, you know chlorophyll a will absorb it when there is a blue and green light got it like that so look here the ability of chlorophyll a pigment to absorb light of different wavelengths now can you see here chlorophyll a is here the blue color here this chlorophyll a is there can you see here is completely going and again up so this is the which region students blue light region this is the red light region red light region and can you see maximum activity is there during the blue and the red light and here you can see chlorophyll b is at the peak okay chlorophyll b that means say now if i calculate if i calculate somewhere between say 480 right somewhere between 400 to 500 480 correct okay now if i see the maximum activity of say chlorophyll a what will it be somewhere between 450 right 450 so can you see their maximum that means at ma that point they will absorb the maximum got it students okay so here you can see these are the wavelengths okay wavelengths of light in nanometer that means see i can tell at 450 the chlorophyll a is at maximum absorption it can absorb maximum more photosynthesis more pigments more oxygen release all this will happen clear clear got it all of you got it all of you yes till here is it clear till here is it clear let me know quickly in the chat box is photosynthesis chapter still difficult for you people or whatever concept i have done is it easy now are you able to understand yes or no clear because from uh, rest of the class we will be starting light reaction that will be <coughs> okay that will be more like it is little more understanding more understanding you have to do right students if you have very very specific doubts you have to join my special class and ask because here there is a limit right i cannot see all the messages your messages keep moving right so i will not be able to catch on all the doubts and clear okay so if you have doubts please feel free to join my special class i will clear all your doubts i will answer your doubts 100 times if you want right okay easy easy chapter is easy let me know quickly put my favorite emoji put my favorite emoji and let me know is the chapter easy is the chapter easy yes or no yes or no yes okay okay great great yes so students what i want you people to do is i know you have uh, uh, chemistry and physics but then before tomorrow's class i want you people to read ncrt still where i taught okay because why i'm telling you why i'm trying to tell you is it's because it's because if you don't read ncrt you are not going to understand anything now you might think oh yeah i understood everything but once when i put up mcq questions you will understand that no i did not i maybe i need more revision okay right right 
see some leaves are red okay it is because of their pigment presence of the pigment right now uh, when we studied algae we saw phycoerythrin phycocyanin so whichever pigment is more whichever pigment is more that color will be shown okay that color will be shown but understand the plant as a whole the the whole green color that you see is a combination of four pigments okay yes students uh, actually there's very less time for rapid fire so i am doubtful today if we can have a rapid fire next class remind me about rapid fire okay otherwise you people have to be very very quick then i can do a rapid fire can you be very quick can you be very very quick yes okay okay let's start quickly we'll start okay okay first question first question which was the scientist okay which was the scientist who discovered oxygen okay which was the scientist who discovered oxygen you can at least put the first name because it's difficult to write very good harini has answered first nandini sanvi trisha all of you very good speed discovered oxygen joseph prisley okay now which was the aquatic plant used by jan okay which was the aquatic plant used by oops plant used by jan jan ingenhouse which was the aquatic plant he used very good did elon musk type hydrilla okay pranati very good hydrilla hydrilla now tell me who gets who gets reduced in the reaction who gets reduced in the reaction is it carbon dioxide or is it water who gets reduced in the reaction tell me quickly runs fast we have a class very good nandini has answered first okay reduced in the reaction carbon dioxide gets reduced in the reaction okay tell me one function of the membrane is out out um your membrane is layer okay one function of a membrane membrane is layer or out, me, outer covering chloroplast membrane is layer one function one function any one function two functions i taught you one function very good kailash good speed trapping light trapping light okay all of you have put trapping light okay ha pranati has put synthesize of atp and nadph very good last question last question which was the filamentous algae green algae used for the experiment which was the filamentous green algae used for the experiment of the prism angelman's experiment okay tell me angelman's experiment which was the algae used filamentous algae very good who typed it first kailash cladophora very good i'm happy with all of your very fast response okay students so we are done good job you have answered all the rapid fire questions right rapid fire was very very rapid right okay thank you so much for joining students starting there was some delay i'm sorry for that okay it was some technical error but then i hope the session was really helpful let me know in the comment section if you have any feedbacks and if you want such classes okay let me know in the comment section because i read all your comments okay so once the session ends let me know how did you feel about the class because i'll be waiting to read your comments so that we can make class more interactive and more fun right thank you so much students for joining if you still haven't joined our avengers 3.0 batch too late students join quickly because you're getting your entire need 2024 coaching in 6 months for just 399 and you can use my code gopika so that you will get maximum discounts right okay join my special class link is right in the description box you can join my special class i'll clarify all your doubts okay shiva i hope your answer is clear how do we ask doubt come to the special class there's a complete session where you can ask your doubts and i will answer it it's in the description box link is in the description box students you can go check on any of my video link is in the description box you can also check my shorts in that also link is there just copy paste the link okay yes bye students see you all you have one minute next class so bye okay